Hi, Scott here from the Centre for Excellence's Computational Modelling Systems team. Today I'm just going to show you a bit of an introduction to TotalView, which is a graphical debugger that you can use to work out why your programs are not working. So I'm just got, going to download some example code from the internet so you can follow along. So I'm going to run on value. So I'm just currently logged onto the super, supercomputer just because TotalView is a proprietary program with big license fees so you're not able to get it on your desktop. So I'm running, going to run git clone and this address so it's just going to download it from the internet and cd into TotalView. So what we've got here is a function called hello world.f90 if I run cat hello world, you see what's in it. So we can see that the program hello world is an MPI program because it's calling MPI in it. And what it's doing is it's getting the current rank and writing hello world from rank and then it's ending the program. So to build this and make the actual program we're going to run make. So it's compiling it with the MPI it. F90 compiler, so it's Fortran 90. Important thing to note here is that I've added in the dash G flag. What that does is adds in debugging symbols so that we can actually see what the function names are and where we are in the source code once we get to the debugging stage. So I can run hello world now. Hello world from rank 0, because the default rank is 0. I can run MPI run. Hello world does the same thing and I can run a multi-threaded process. So as normal in an MPI environment you, these don't run in any particular order they just come out when they come out so we see here it's gone 3, 1, 2, naught rather than being in any, any particular order. So we want to have a look at sort of the basic controls of the debugger. So the first thing we need is the module loaded. Should we just do that? So like anything else on at NCI, total view is in a module. So then we we run the MPI run command just like normal. I'll just run a single thread for this part and we add in double dash debug so MPI run debug hello world we're going to start this up and out's going to spool a lot of information just about where it's loading stuff from and we can see up in the corner over here we've got the first of what's going to be three total view windows so it's basically just loading in all of the data from the program working out which of bits of the program correspond to which bits of source code. Okay, So we've now got two more windows. So this window here is the startup parameters. We don't care, we're just going to hit OK. So now we're down to two windows. The first one, this one over here, is which MPI processes or which threads, if it's a multi-threaded program, are being run. So this will end up with a lot of thread information. And this is the main debugging view. So this will be where our source code comes in when we start debugging. So I'll just make this bigger. Okay, first thing we want to do is just start running. So press the big green go button. And up comes this message. Process MPI run is a parallel job. Do you want to stop the job now? So the way MPI works is MPI run is sort of an outside program and that that will itself start up the main program that you're going to actually in, be interested in. Um, so this means when you first start up TotalView you can't see any of your actual actual program's code so that's why it stops it once it's once the MPI is started so you can actually go in and have a look at your own code. So we'll stop it here. Doo -doo. Okay. 
So we've got in this view, we've got the MPI run thread. And so we've got these two threads, well, these two MPI processes. So processes and then threads within the processes. So most of these we don't care about, so we're just going to go over to this window. Uh, there are three main sections here. There's the stack trace. So this is a list of each function and what it's called and what that function is called and what that function is called. So we've started at start when uh, when Linux first tries to run the program, it runs this function called start, which then calls into the C library, which will go libc start main, which then calls into the Fortran library, which is called main, and the Fortran library then runs your actual program. So you can see here these don't have any code associated with them, so they're just down here is assembly code. Whereas in our actual function that we've written, we've got our source code. And then our source code is called MPI init, which is called PMPI init, which is called OMPI MPI init, which is called Modex, and so on and so forth. All the way up to here, which is where the which is where the debuggers decide to stop it. So that's the stack window. So if you sort of deep into a function tree, this shows you where you've come from. So at the moment we only really care about the Fortran code which is in Hello World. The other thing we've got is the stack frame. This shows us any local variables and what their value is. Um, this also shows common blocks and registers. These are to do with the actual CPU instructions. Um, for the most part we won't care about them. So. We're here. Um, so now that we've st stopped it, we probably want to start it running again. So for that, we've got all of these buttons here. Um, this is to do with what the different threads are doing. We're not going to care about that for the moment. So we've got three buttons. We've got go, that just runs the program. So it'll keep running till the end, and then once it once it's ended, you can start it up again with go and stop it since it started up in MPI again. Halt will stop it if it's running, so if we're really quick we might be able to halt it. Hey, no, that's job completed. So this is too small a program to really use halt. Where halt shines is when you've got an infinite loop or something, you want to be halting just once the once the job's churning away, and that can show you where you are in the program, what it's actually doing. Um, kill does what it says, it kills the program, so it stops it, and the program no longer exists. Um, so you have to start it up again. Do you want to stop it? Restart kills it, then starts it again, so you don't have to hit two buttons. Um, okay, so that's sort of coarse grain control. We've also got some finer grain control here. So we've got the next, we'll go to the next instruction to be run. So we can see it's jumping along in here. So it's going from jump, jump instruction, which is now up there, and we're on to the next instruction. Um, so that also works in the text. We just have to get out of that level. So if we run out, it'll go, it'll finish the current running function and go up, and finish that function and finish that function. So it, it runs the fu functions to the end. It doesn't just stop them where if they happen to be and jumps out. So it runs to the end, and then it goes back up to where it was called, just like it was returned normally. So I'll just go up and up and up, and we're back in here. So now we're at the next line here. So we've gone MPI init, and now we're trying to get the rank of the MPI rank. So that's out. And next um, step, so next we'll go to the next source line. Step is when you've got your own functions. What it will do is it'll go into that function. So um, if I'd call if I'd called my own function here, 
and I press step and I was on that line, I would go into the code for that function. So it's sort of useful for drilling down a bit. Um, we've also got run to. If you click on a line and press run to, it'll run the program until it hits that line. That's handy if you've got a loop and you don't want to be stepping through every iteration of the loop. You just press, you just select a line after the loop and hit run to. Um, so let's restart the function program. Just because we've got such a small program, we hit the end pretty quickly. Um, the other useful thing to do is breakpoints. So that lets a line lets let lets you select a line in the func in the program, and you can select more than one. And when when the program hits that line, it'll stop, and it'll highlight it, and it'll wait for you to continue. And that lets you inspect all the variables. If you just hold your mouse over a variable, it'll show you the value of it here. Um, this is a constant, so it doesn't show up in the debugging information. But we've got I error is 0, and rank is 0. Um, you can turn breakpoints on and off, and you can also temporarily disable them down here at the bottom. So you can see it's greyed out there. You can grey out this, and when we run it, it won't hit that breakpoint, it'll just end the program. Okay, so that's the basics of controlling Turtle View. Um, thanks for watching. Next time I'll probably go into debugging multi-threaded programs and swapping between threads and how you can do that.